When ChatGPT came out, I started to write code and make small apps because I never knew how to code. But I always wanted to make these small softwares that can do custom things for me. Like for example, can I take my favorite TikTok accounts, put them into a spreadsheet and get their last 10 videos with their views and likes and everything like that? Or just code that takes screenshots of websites. Therefore, I have now found a process and a workflow where I believe that you can go from any idea that you have to a finished product that you can share with other people. Huge disclaimer here. If it's a big ass project, maybe not, but I've been able to make pretty much anything that I can imagine. So by the end of this video, you can create your own app. So the app that I need and I want to create and show you how I created looks very much like scribehow.com. So essentially, you just capture a scribe, click on new tab, and then you can create instructions. Now capturing your browser, we can make a how to instruction on something to do. Let's say we go to Amazon, then we click on amazon.com, type the characters, and then we type type TV, oops, something weird happened. Either way, if I click on show controls now and I complete the capture, and then I get these beautiful instructional screenshots on exactly how somebody else could do that, right? So navigate to Google, click this search field, click on amazon.com, type this, type that, and yada yada. And I was like, there must be some way to just take screenshots when you click a mouse button. And I'm like, can I code that? So in three steps, I'm gonna show you what I did to make it and by the end also I'll give you the software as well since I am a software developer now. So the first step is actually just can you make a Python script that captures a screenshot every time I click my mouse? Simple idea, right? And right away you will get this code. Now if you never set up code before, this is what step one is for. So you can copy this code and you need to download Visual Studio code. This is where we're gonna copy and paste all the code. Also, if you're completely new, click on this extensions tab and search for Python and you need to download that as well. Now just click on file, click on new file and we can name it something like screen one dot pi. And for a first time user, this is very important. Put it in your documents folder and not hidden inside of a folder inside of a folder and click on create file. Now you can see everything is completely blank. So we're finally going to paste the first line of code. Now all you have to do is open source LLMs are getting better than chat GPT. But what's even better than that? is a fine-tuned LLM based on your data. In the past, this has been very hard to do because you need a lot of computing power, but today you can do it easily with Gradient.ai. Gradient removes the need for infrastructure and allows you to either use one of the many state-of-the-art open-sourced LLMs to build your AI application, or you can use one of their out-of-the-box industry expert LLM that specializes on things like healthcare and finance. What makes it even better is that Gradient allows you to use your private data on top of their LLMs. This creates an even higher performing LLM. This is especially important if you're a business because you control the data and the model that it is on top of, which is essential to your privacy. You get more value with a custom AI because it can solve your problem faster and be more relevant. The best part is that it's pay as you use, or if you have a business, you can contact their sales rep and get a custom quote. So click link in the description to fine tune your LM with Gradient AI. Thank you so much for sponsoring this section of the video. Now, all you have to do is go down in the terminal. If you don't have a terminal, all you need to do is click on view and click on terminal, or you click on terminal and click on new terminal. Then you should have this in the bottom here. Since we're in the Ender documents folder, you might see that we are here in users and their folder. And the way to change that is to write CD and then click on documents. Now you can see that we're running inside of this documents folder, which is exactly where we have this pi file. So now all we need to do is, now I'm gonna write Python, and then I'm gonna write the name of the file. So you remember screen one dot pi. So screen one dot pi. And if we click enter, you literally have your first software running. You see this? If I click now, there's a screenshot that is saved right now. 
another click, another screenshot. So I can go back and forth here and I can go to new tabs, I can click more and more and it will literally save screenshots for me right here. The first product is usually pretty bad and that's where we enter into phase number two, refining it. As you can see, it's doing screenshot.png and it's basically overwriting the screenshot with another document. Also, it's right here in the documents folder. It would be way nicer to have it all organized and maybe the screenshots ramp up. And I actually asked it if I would run this in VS Code, how would I do it? And you can always ask it how to do things that's like the best thing about ChatGPT. It'll teach you all of this, even how to go to the documents folder. And here is the refinement prompt. This prompt here is probably the most important as if you do a bad refinement prompt and then you just continue down this path, it might never work. So sometimes you always go back to the refinement prompt to get a better initial condition so it actually creates the best result. Sometimes I just end up in loops and loops and loops. And if you do, go back all the way to the beginning almost and then refine it or even start a new chat. So my first refinement prompt was, okay, great. Please make some changes to the script. First, I want to be able to see the cursor when I take a screenshot. Second, all of them same as the same name. So that's the second issue. Every screenshot starting from one and going up. So we get a list of, you know, 30 screenshots as it's running. Then I want an easy way to stop the code. So maybe if I press Control Alt L, it stops, right? And I usually add this at the end. Before you help me, advise me if this is the best way to go about it. And you'll see if these are working or if they're not working. However, what ends up happening is that it says a lot of different things. I say, let's do it. And then it has an improved script. Now here is where you will come into probably the most valuable part of this video. You copy the code, you go back to Visual Studio Code, you paste the code, and it's very important that you click Control S so you save it. In the terminal, I'm gonna write again, cd.document to get in the right folder, and then I'm gonna write what? I can click the up arrow, Python, screen1.py, and when I click on Enter, as you can see, we get an error. Now, this is very normal. It's pretty much the definition of doing coding with ChatGPT. You copy the error, you paste the code into ChatGPT, and it will just give you an answer. Sometimes maybe you have to install something uh, that you haven't installed or it will actually just give you code. You just copy that back into VS Code again. You click on Control and Save. You go down to the terminal, click up arrow, run again, click some buttons and now it's saved and it's going into the correct folder. It's actually counting way up or you get an error. You copy that error back again and that's the loop. Again and again asking error and again. So you can see that I can't see the mouse, please fix. Also the control alt L doesn't work. And could you make a little UI that I can click stop? And just like that, it gives you that. And it's literally, there's still no cursor showing. This is how you do the back and forth. Just as an example, this was the entire error code. I just copy pasted it. That goes copy, paste, say instructions, find out more information, and you will go just around and around for a little bit while you will see incremental results that just makes you so motivated. And we just go through it like, we made this happen and that happen, and it's really, really fun or tedious sometimes. It really depends on you actually. And by the end of this process, you will go from 53 lines of code to the final version, which is, yes, yeah, 73 lines of code. And if I run this one, you can see we have the start and a stop button that if I click on start, I can click around, capture anything I want, go here, say hello, save that, go to a different website, even go to amazon.com if I want to, take screenshots all day on amazon.com. When I'm finished, I just click on stop. Every time I run it, it actually creates a new folder and inside of that folder, you can see all the different screenshots that we took earlier, including the mouse. So you should now be able to refine your prompt and keep iterating until it gets better seeing that, oh, can I add this feature to make it even better? And by the end of this process, 
you will have a finished product that you actually like. Then step number three is to turn that into an exe file, or you can even turn it into a Chrome extension if you want to. Let me show you. I asked it how to turn it into a Chrome extension, and apparently I had to create like a web API or something like that. So I asked it, is it simpler to make an exe file? And he's like, yeah, definitely. And he basically said, just install this and just run this. It took about three to five minutes and it just created this build folder for me. Uh, inside of it, we have the screen click one and we have the dist that if I click on this program right now, the software is just running. So I can just click on start. They don't even have to go into Python or whatever. And I can just keep clicking buttons and getting screenshots. They even have all inside of these folders, they have all of these things that I would have no idea how to create. Now you can just compress it to a zip file and then just send your app to a friend. By doing this, I learned a completely new skill that I wasn't able to do before. And it feels like nothing is impossible. I obviously haven't tested it on thousands of lines of code and megabytes of data and all of this complexity. But I hope that you will take on one of your ideas, code it yourself, get obsessed with it, and you will enjoy it a lot, I promise. If you are making one of these projects and you want to contact me directly, check out Patreon down below. Also, if you want more videos of me, click on this video now. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.